Jimmy Boy, like a lot of people, still in shock. Just can't believe that Warney has gone. Uh, you today, I believe, spoke at the Channel 7 launch about Warney. Yep. What did you talk about? Well, for a start, w what I can't believe is that I was actually in Koh Samui at the same time he was. Yeah. With no knowledge of it. On fr last, yeah, last Friday. Yeah, last So I was yeah. exiting when all of this yeah. happened and I had no clue he was even there. Mm -hmm. So it was sort of surreal and a bit freaky yeah. in that sense. But, you know, none of us can believe it, Bill. You were a mate of his. Um, I first met Warney in 1987. Yep. Uh, which is 35 years ago. I'll never forget it. We were playing in a second 11 game. He was this bogan from Moorabbin. He had the mullet, the earrings. He had a Nissan Skyline, I reckon. Yeah. And I was saying today, he, he invited me to come and sit in his car. <laughs> and he had the fluffy dice off yeah, the rear yeah, view yeah, mirror. Yeah, 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 yeah. He, and he was, you know, I wasn't Jim at that stage. I can't even remember what he called me. But he said, I want you to listen to my five thousand dollar stereo system, five thousand eighteen in, in the Nissan. In the Nissan. Oh, so we were sat in the car, and he yeah. had AC DC going, and it was that effing loud yes. that the bloody windscreen was going in and out. Oh, and he's just—I remember him looking at me, going, "How good?" <laughs> what were you thinking? Five grand <laughs> no. in eighty-seven. So that's like twenty now. It's more than the car. It was ridiculous. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. But it summed him up. It, yeah. His passion was there on display, not just about how brilliant a cricketer he was, but. You know, his passion for his car yeah. and his sound system. It didn't matter what Shane was doing. Mm. He um, he loved every second of it. Yeah. And, of course, Bill, we we sat back and watched, and I'm a little bit older than Shane. I played a lot of cricket against him. I, I watched him come from a, a, a fat kid that ripped huge leg spinners yeah. to the greatest of his kind ever to play the game. What was he like? You would have faced him, like in Fair Dickham. You're yep. out there in first-class cricket. Yep. What was it like facing him? Well, before he injured, he had a couple of injuries which made him a different bowler. He injured his shoulder and his hand. Mm. But prior to that, when he was young, you could hear the ball fizzing. Yeah. Like he used to make you this could, could you? Yeah. sound as it came down. Yeah. And three quarters of the way down, it then just dived to the left of you as you were facing, yeah. if yeah. you like, yeah. to the leg side. Because he put that many revs on the ball that it used to drift in. And then the thing would spin a mile and, and, and fast and hard. <laughs> um, but... What I always loved about Shane was he tried to take a wicket with every single ball he bowled. Well, he there, thought there, he got a wicket with every ball. Every ball. Yeah, there was yeah, no did, backward yeah. steps. Yeah. There was no just, I'll hold the game for a while. He tried to get you out every ball he bowled. Mm. He was the most competitive cricketer I ever saw. And um, oh, he was a genius. And also good in the commentary box. You yep. work with him there. He had a good cricket brain. Oh, no, amazing. Didn't he? Yeah, amazing. And, he, you know, he's, especially when slow bowling came on, his ability to dissect that was completely nuts. And... Uh, the, the other thing about working with him, Fat, was you know, uh, Shane's life was a complete circus. Yeah, yeah but we knew that. For, for the whole time I knew him, stuff was going on around his world that no one else ever yeah. had happened. Yeah. So yeah. we'd be sitting in the green room at the MCG. I was talking about this today. Um, just minding our own business off comms. Yep. And suddenly Charlie Watts would walk in. Mm. You know, and you're like, that's the drummer Come for up. the Rolling Stones. Or Chris Martin, Martin. would walk yes. in. Or Hugh Jackman would walk in. And they only ever wanted to see one bloke. And they, the first thing they'd all say is, where's Shane? Yeah. You know? Yeah. But he never thought that was unusual. <laughs> but the rest of us are like, there's a global superstar. Yeah, that's right. One, he's like, yeah, he's just a mate. Yeah. And they just sit and talk crap for half an hour. And they say, sorry, mate, I've got to go on and commentate. And Well, well Elton John and yeah, who, Mick, Mick Jagger, Jagger come out, both come out and said, if they weren't themselves, they'd, they'd want to be Shane mm -hmm. Warren, mate. Um, it, it was unbelievable. And, and no... Last time I saw him, because um, I used to, he was just good fun. If yeah, you were oh, with yeah. him on the turps yeah. or whatever, he was good fun. And no doubt. actually, Rabsy was with us, and we had a Christmas party last year for Triple M. Me and mm. Rabsy are the last two to leave. Mm -hmm. We go down Chapel Street, Rabsy's hotel. What was it? The Wolf, Wolf and I. Wolf and I, yep. So we line up. We're in line there, Jim. In line at the Wolf and you I. You had to line up. Well, I didn't want to push in, right? Yeah, right. Yeah. Rabsy goes, is that Warney over there? He's out the front having a dart, yeah. right? And I reckon he had six Indian blokes around him, right? Of go, oh, Shane, Shane, you know, yes. they, they, because India loved him. Worshiping India, him, exactly. Yeah. And I went over. I said, "Warn." He goes, "Billy, oh, thank God you're here. Come with me." I said, "I got a mate here." He goes, "All right, bring him." So I said, "Oh, come on, Ramsey, stuff you." Okay. <laughs> so this is true. Straight past the line, security, straight in oh, here, yeah. Warney. He had a roped off area, didn't he, Ramsey? Mm -hmm. He had a roped off in area. Yep. We sat there, whatever drink you wanted, Jim. Mm -hmm. They had some friends there. We had a great time. Mm -hmm. It was just fantastic. And that's what he was like. And he had some interesting mates. Oh, Real, very, no, very and, ec and the eclectic word is, group. What is it? Eclectic. That's the word. So okay. he, had lo he, 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 was, he, he was in touch with a lot of different groups of people. Everyone worshipped him. I was talking today, Rabs. I don't know whether you did this game with the Triple M this year, but Brad Haddon 
was telling a cracking story about a one day New South Wales Victoria game they played in the nineties. Remember those ING sites? Oh mate. If yeah. you hit it, started at fifty grand to start <laughs> That's of the year. Right, yeah. By the end of the year it got to two hundred plus. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, Hads was saying that Warney's batting and he flushed this sort of moose to mid wicket. Yeah. And had said all way it was hitting the side. Sign. All the way. <laughs> and he said at the last second, it just dropped oh. low enough to miss it by about six inches. <laughs> anyway, the, the New South Wales boys are all pissing themselves yeah, up. Yeah, yeah. And Heads, obviously, <laughs> could never shut up. So he turned around and said, sucked in. Warnie, this just cost you 200 grand. <laughs> and Warnie turned around and said, do I look like I need it? <laughs> <laughs> That's right. But that's it? him. Oh, mate. You know, he was, uh, oh. he was a, a, the most, he and... Was him Akram comfortably the best bowlers I ever saw play yeah. the game, and they were close. Oh, they were well. Mm. It, it, he was close with all of the, you know, Lara and oh, Tendulkar, and yeah, you know, yeah. he was you know, Freddie Flintoff and all those blokes. His his reach was extraordinary. But um, Bill, we need to never forget before we get off his ability as a player. He did the most difficult thing in the game of cricket by a mile, mm. better than anyone ever has. Made it look easy. Leg spin bowling is the hardest skill in cricket by that far. It doesn't matter, yep. and. He was extraordinary at it. Um, but as you say, more important than all of that, he is a magnificent bloke. Great dad. His, his beautiful kids will Great be... Great father. Yeah, yeah, wonderful, devoted father. Um, but you know what else, Jim? And we'll talk about this. He wasn't a big drinker. No, very He was really. not a big drinker. No. And he didn't do drugs. Ever. Ever. He hated drugs. He did. And, and he, but what he was... And he had good manners. Very, very polite. He actually had very, very polite, polite, had very, very good Especially manners. with like, you know, my beautiful girl, Lisa. Yeah. She always used to say, he, he, I'm amazed at how how polite That's and right. courteous Shane always is when you see him. Had good manners. And yeah. also he was real. And as he said, um, we heard him there before, if he stuffed up, he put up his oh, hand. And this is what we love about, you know, in Australia. And he said, I, I stuffed that up, you know. Well, so. the other thing, fat, ridiculously generous. Yeah. So the amount yeah. of times he'd have 10 people at a dinner table, he'd pick up the whole tab. Mm -hmm. He wouldn't let anyone else put their hand in their yeah. pocket. Mm -hmm. To the point, a bit like Sam Newman's the yeah, same. Yeah, exactly. Bit like the, where you eventually say, Shane, you don't need to do that. Mm -hmm. We can all chip in. No, we'll miss him. Yeah. Um, I, I still can't believe he's, you know, <laughs> 52 us, years yeah. of age. It, it Astounds me that he's um, he's not here, mate. Mm -hmm. I, I, I mm -hmm. cannot get my head around it. No.